Hey what is up guys, this is Eli for MoboxGraphics.com and some time ago I was browsing Dribble and found this shot and I really liked it and I was also thinking how this was made. Also this is made by the user MXMC so if you want to check him out make sure to go on Dribble for that. But after thinking some more about how this was made I noticed I already made something like this or not exactly the shapes you can see right here but the lighting studio. So here in Cinema 4D you can see what I made earlier for myself just to see how this works. But to stay a little closer to the shot on Dribble of MXMC I'm going to create a new document in Cinema 4D and show you guys how to make this lighting setup. A first useful thing to do is creating an infinite floor. So start off with creating the floor and also create a background object. Now with these if you render it it isn't seamless so we need something that is infinite. To do that let's create a material first. And we're going to make this just fully white. You can also disable the reflectance just to be sure. Drag it on both the floor and the background. And now right click on the floor object, go to Cinema 4D tags and choose the compositing tag. In the compositing tag the only thing you need to do is checking this compositing background option. And now if you render it should be seamless like this. Now you could be putting anything you want in this. But for this one I already prepared some kind of made up object, which I'm going to paste in here. Let's drag it so it is floating above the floor. This 3D model is quite simple to make, but let's go over some of the little details which may be new for you. So for these outer rings I used a tube object, you can see it here. And what I did is going in the slice options and here you can set it to any value you like, so it looks like some kind of cross section is going on. I did that for all three of them. Then in here it is just some cylinder with some extrusions. And the cogwheels here are also cylinders. But I just selected some of the polygons and extruded them outwards. And then here it is just some more cylinders. So that is quite easy. Now for the arrows you can see it is also quite easy to do. What I found to be the easiest way is actually using a plane object. So if you go in here you can see it is a plane. What I did is starting off with just this regular plane. Let's create a new one in a new document so you can see what is going on. So I made a plane. Let's go in the settings and remove all the segments until it is just one segment. Then you can make it editable. And this way when you use the edge mode you can first extrude it outwards like this. And then make an extrusion to the front and then scale this down again. So the two outer points almost overlap each other. And this way you have some kind of arrow. The same thing goes for this one which is a little rounder. This was also just a cylinder object. And you could make it editable. And maybe remove the cap at the top and the bottom. And remove some of the polygons at the side as well. I'm also going to scale this down vertically. And then it was just the same thing again, selecting the edges creating an extrusion upwards in this case and then extruding them outwards again and then scaling down. And this way you have some kind of nice looking rounded arrow. So enough about the model itself. You can also see I have these objects in two separate groups. One is no shadow objects, so these are the arrows. They don't need to cast any shadows on the floor. I just want them to be flat like you've drawn them in Photoshop or something. So what I did is adding a compositing tag on this group and disable the cast shadows down here so everything that goes in this will not be casting any shadows. Then the other group will just hold anything that can hold shadows. Also notice the materials at the bottom. For the objects like arrows I want them to be flat looking as I just said. So here I only use the luminance channel so there is no shading at all on it. You can see I already made the color for the cylinders here. So what I did is just going to the color channel for that one. Copy the color, so right click on color. And then go to the new material and go to the luminance channel and paste it there. So that is quite easy to do. As you may have noticed the colors you choose are very important for this kind of style. So that is up to you really. But I like to keep them very colorful and saturated not something dark looking. Okay so let's start with the light setup itself. To make this look just right I would like to split up all the directions from where the light comes. So that would mean we need one light for every direction. So let's start off with a top light. 
what I'm going to use as the light is a directional light, so infinite light in this case. You don't need to move it, you only need to rotate it. You need to search for this white line with the yellow end on it and just rotate it 90 degrees to the bottom so it points downwards. So that is the top light. Let's also name this top light so we know what is going on. For this one we can keep it pure white and we're going to set the shadow of this to area. So we have some nice shadows beneath the object. As you can notice the shadows are very hard right now. They will get a little less hard when we add some more lights. But I already want to decrease the density of this under the shadow tab to something like 80%. Next up let's create a front light. So what we need is another infinite light. And let's rotate this light so the yellow dot points towards the back of the object. So that is 180 degrees. Now you may think this is the right side and not the front. But if you go in the different viewport views you can see this is the front view and not this one. This is the right view actually. So we are looking from this point to this one at the back. Now for the light itself let's also name it again. And go back in the general tab. Thinking about how the look will be. We don't want this to be fully white like the top light. There needs to be some kind of difference. So we will play with the intensity. It's up to you what you do with this. But I recommend going for something like 35% intensity. Also there is no need for shadows. Because the top light will do most of the shadowing for this lighting setup. Next up let's create a side light. So which will come from the left in this case. Create a new infinite light. And this one will also need some kind of different intensity. But in this scene we already had something around the 35% range. And also at 100% range. So let's get something like 75%. Let's take a look how this looks already. And as you may notice this has some of the properties from the example I showed you earlier. But it is just a little dark and maybe also a little dirty looking. To fix this there is an easy solution. We just need to crank up the brightness of the overall scene. So what we can do is just creating a light. And in here go in the general tab if you haven't already. And scroll down until you can click the ambient illumination option. This way if we render it will look a lot brighter. But in this case way too bright because you can't see the white rings against the background. So what we need to do is decreasing the intensity of this to something like 75 or 80% again. That way you can see some kind of difference between the background and the object. One more thing I would like to do is using the isometric camera to make it look better. So go here to cameras, axonometric and choose isometric. Now you can see this is still a little harsh on the top. So maybe we need to decrease the intensity of the top light to something like 75% maybe. Or let's say 80 to have a little more difference. That way we already get some detail back again. Maybe at 75%. Now it is easier to see the edge of this side. So this way you have some kind of flat lighting studio. Like it is drawn in Illustrator or something. But because we want to make it look three-dimensional, it is way easier to make this in Cinema 4D compared to Illustrator. To make it look even more 3D than this, you can go to the render settings and add an effect which will be an ambient occlusion. That way when you render again, you can see there is a little shading in between the objects making it easier to see them. Maybe this is a little bit too much for you. So you can go back to the ambient occlusion settings. And what you could do to make this look less strong is decreasing the contrast, maybe even to minus 100%. That way you still have some kind of nice details popping out, but it is still looking very flat. So that is basically how easy it is to make a flat lighting setup. I would like to show you this other project I had. What you can notice is there are some soft shadows at the more three-dimensional objects than the flat cubes. So what I did for this is making a shadow caster object, which is just an area light with an area shadow. And let's go back to the perspective view to see where it is positioned according to the scene. And you can see it is very large and slightly tilted towards the scene from the side you prefer to, which is the left side in my case. The shadow is just 100% density, everything at default. And by the looks of it, there isn't really anything different than the other scene. So by showing you that I would like to wrap up this video. 
Of course, it is up to you how you distribute the intensities of every light. So for you, it might be that you need this side to be more bright than the front one. So in that case, you would need to increase the brightness of the side light and decrease the front one. I hope this video can help you to make some nice looking illustrations or motion graphics. And also, if you don't feel like making this yourself, you can download both the project files on our Patreon page. The link will be in the description. Also, if you enjoy the Cinema 4D videos on this channel, make sure to subscribe so I can see you on the next video. See you there.